Hello, my name is Artemis on the Sport Anime, and today I'm going to be reading a fan fiction from Silver Mist Anime Lover. I'm going to link them into the description. Now, on to the story. Summary Why should I be the one to go? You're the teacher, the hero. What good could someone like me do? Izuku. The man's voice was harsh and made the younger man's eyes focus on his friend. His eyes softened. It must be you. You're not who you were back then. You aren't useless. Remember this. You are a hero, and the, the world is counting on you, even if nobody realizes it. Here, when the time comes, give this to him. You'll know he trusts you when he calls you problem child. He smiled fondly, handing Izuku a pair of rings on a chain. When the world ends, their only hope is to send back one quirkless man, back in time. Back in his 14-year-old body, will Midori Izuku be able to save the world that shunned him all his life? Will he finally be able to come, become a hero this go-around? Good thing he had time as a vigilante to practice. Chapter 1. Farewell. You have to go, the older man shouted, urgently, shooting a fierce glare towards his companion. If I leave you, you'll die, the younger argued, green eyes brimming with tears. You know as well as I do that we don't have a choice here. We always knew one of us would have to stay behind and destroy the portal. So why should I be the one to go? You're the teacher, the hero. What good could someone like me do? Izuku. The man's voice was harsh, and his sharp tone made the younger man's eyes focus on his friend. The elder's eyes softened. It must be you. You're not who you were back then. You aren't useless. Remember this. You are a hero, and the world is counting on you, even if nobody realizes it. But, Izuku sniffled, what about you? I swore. I promised I'd looked after us. Here, when the time comes, give this to him. You'll know he trusts you when he calls you problem child. He smiled fondly, handing Izuku a pair of rings on a chain. Drenched laughter filtered down the corridor, making the two stiffen. They hadn't expected him to show up. With that man in the building, they knew their defenses wouldn't hold for much longer. You need to go. Now. He pulled Izuku into a hug. As the smaller man clung to him for all he was worth, tears screaming down his face. This isn't goodbye. Yes, it is. Izuku's fingers dug into the man's shoulder. You... You won't be you. That's ridiculous. I'll always be me, and you'll always be my problem child. The man violently shoved Izuku backward, making him stumble into the swirling vortex. Save the world, Midoriya Izuku. He smiled, in a bright, hopeful grin that looked so out of place on the man's exhausted face. The door behind him disintegrated into dust as a blue-haired man covered in severed hands grinned up in glee, only to screech in, screech in rage upon seeing Izuku in the portal. With an indomitable fury, his hands latched onto the older man's face, covering his eyes so he couldn't escape his fate. Shota! With a smirk, Shota clicked the big red button. The last thing Izuku heard before being entirely consumed by the portal was the gateway exploding. Pain. Pain was all that Izuku knew. It felt like his atoms were being torn apart and thrust back together. The first thing that he was aware of, as the pain started to fade, was that it un was unusually bright outside, and someone was there. He tried to fall into a defensive crouch, but his body wouldn't obey. Instead, he found himself on his butt as he blinked up at... All Might? I cannot simply say you can become a hero, even without a power. Oh. Oh. It was that day on the rooftop. Of course I had to go back onto one of the worst moments of my life. A fucking course. He looked up back up when the iron door closed behind the blonde figure. Izuku winced as he staggered to his feet. He looked down at his hands, younger hands. They were smaller than he was used to, but there was still that scar he'd gotten when he was 23 after he stupidly participated in a drunken round of the knife game. Wait a minute, he winced as his voice came out several octaves higher than he was used to, but ignored that for the moment. He instead looked himself over, carefully peeling off his shirt. He looked down to find a familiar yet vastly different body. His muscles were still there, as were all of his scars. He could count his ribs, and his skin was shockingly pale. That slash he'd gotten from the Nomu two weeks ago was still there in healing, but his body was so much smaller. I, I'm 14 again. They had no idea how things would pan out. For all their calculations and carefully run scenarios, Izuku and Shota had no real way of knowing if this would even work. For all they knew, he'd been tossed back a few months or even to the womb, or just killed. Shota! Izuku breathed as the gravity of what happened hit him hard. 
he fell back against the wall behind him and brought his face to his knees. With no one there to witness anything, he freely cried. For the first time since Sasashi's death, he was truly alone for the first time in years. It wasn't a good feeling. He felt isolated and lost, and he needed Shota's strong, reassuring arms around it. He needed his best friend, his brother, and the realization that Shota and Hizashi were alive now didn't help him and because they wouldn't remember him. He would just be a stranger to them, and that hurt him all the more. <laughs> Damn it, Sho, he sniffled, voice crackling. I swear to God, I'm going to make that life of yours a living hell for pulling that kind of stunt. He aggressively wiped, swiped at his tears. We're supposed to do this together, you asshole. He looked down at the necklace punched in his fist. Hazashi and Shota's wedding band sat innocently on his palm. With a shaky sigh, he put the necklace around his own neck and tucked it into his shirt, which he put back on. Wait, he looked down at his clothing. It was exactly what he had been wearing in the lab that he and Shota had occupied. How had All Might not- Time travel is so goddamn confusing. He shook his head and patted himself down, smirking lightly as he realized he had all of his weapons on his person. Cool. I've still got ten months until the Arctrix exam. He nodded to himself as he looked below, over the railing of the bustling city below him. He felt like his senses were on overdrive. He survived eight to ten years in the apocalypse world with deathly science. silence where the slightest sound could get you killed. So, a lively town filled with colorful noises and movement made him twitchy as hell. It sent all of his senses to high alert as he awaited the arrival of an enemy that he knew wasn't gonna come. As if I wasn't socially awkward enough at before, he shook his head. Izuku had no intentions of going back home. His dear mother had never taken kindly to corklessness. She had been a kind, loving mother once, but his father had come home when he was about five and slowly poisoned her mind. So even though his father was off on long business trips and never came home, his mother dished out plenty of neglect more often than not. She wasn't outright abusive, but she could care less if he was there or not. With that thought in mind, he carefully leapt from one rooftop to another, avoiding the more populated areas as he made his way back to his mother's apartment. He was honestly surprised he remembered where it was, let alone which window was his. It had been long enough that he hardly remembered the apartment number. The only way he'd recognized the room was because of the crack on the window from when he'd gotten mad at the age 7 and threw something at it. Izuku stole into his old bedroom, taking a moment to reminisce about his old childish room. The walls were covered in drawings of hero posters that he'd been never allowed to buy. He'd gotten much better at drawing them over the years and the shelves were covered in replicas of hero merch that he'd in the stores. The older ones he'd made from stolen Play-Doh at the school, while the newer ones were made from actual clay he'd snitched from around the pottery places around town. The scraps, that is. He smiled softly before grabbing a backpack and stuffing it with clothes, provision, and blankets. He carefully took three Eraserhead figurines, five Present Mike figurines, and one Midnight figurine. He grabbed his analysis notebook and a fair supply of pencils, clay, and paints before sneaking into his mother's room and snagging some money. With that done, he grabbed one picture, taken on his third birthday before everything went to shit and fled out of the window. The only place- there was only one place he could think of that he could stay without having to answer any unnecessary questions or interact with people. Dogba Beach. He couldn't help but grin as he came upon the heaping mountains of trash. No one would bother him here that's for sure. He dug his way through the trash before finding an old abandoned camper. He needed to clean it out, but it was perfect. He grinned as he went inside. It smelled terrible, but he'd lived in worse. At least he'd be warm. Being a kid again, Izuku decided, was weird. Gone was his stubble and deep voice, and back was that awkward, higher-pitched, squeaky voice he'd been stuck with until he'd hit 16 or so. It'd been about two weeks since his return, and Izuku was finally settled. He'd cleaned out the camper and scrubbed every inch of it with the bleach he'd brought from the local dollar store. Beggars can't be choosers, but he was going to minimize as many health risks as he could. By the time he was done, the place was practically sparkling. He'd fixed the moldy leak too. The engine was shot as hell, but that was fine by him. He wasn't planning on going anywhere. Anyways. But he was also getting restless. He had a backpack that had come with him from the future with that had plenty of supplies and plans that he and Shota had worked on together. 
and sometimes just seeing Shota's handwriting made him tear up. But his old vigilante outfit was there too, and it got him thinking. In the year before Shigaraki destroyed the world, Midoriya Izuku had been a vigilante known as Viridian. He tried to find a solid career as a quirkless nobody. He ended up eventually trying his hands at support items, but even helping heroes didn't satisfy his deep-seated need to help people. And back then, there'd been a lot more people that needed help than the heroes could reach. So Izuku had taken it upon himself to answer those quiet cries for help. He smiled softly as he held the dark skin the dark green jumpsuit. The mask looked like it was an old school ninja, leaving his green eyes open for the world to see. He held it up in front of him and frowned. Of course the outfit was na- made for- with his adult self in mind, so his tiny pubescent self was not going to fit in that outfit. Okay. Time for plan B. Plan B was to go to the local discount store and buy a Halloween costume and then modify it to look as close to his vigilante outfit as possible. The end result was a black jumpsuit with multiple hidden pouches, as well as a bunch of pouches that resembled a utility belt that looked vaguely reminiscent of a ninja. It wasn't durable, as durable as he would have liked, and it wasn't anything resistant, but it'd have to do. He pulled up the head mask, which left only slits for eyes, and attached his weapons to his person. He looked in the cracked mirror he'd salvaged from the dump, and he looked like a good old-fashioned ninja, like an actual shadow person. He was kind of cool, if he did say so himself. He tightened his bootlaces, five-fingered discount, five finger discounted from them all, and triple-checked his mask. He was finally ready to go. Izuku sighed as he readied himself to go on his patrol. It had been about two months since he started doing these again, and it was dreadfully easy. He had no idea how uncommon vigilantes were before the League of Villains attack on the USJ. In fact, there were only a few handful in Japan who lasted more than a week. Even though he was still dreadfully malnourished from his time in the future, he rarely had any trouble bringing down the criminals. They just weren't anywhere near the same caliber as the Nomu he was used to facing. Because of this, he was starting to make a name for himself. The internet, in particular, was starting to whisper about a new vigilante who was protecting villains in the less harsher, less patrolled areas that the villains see, that the heroes seem to forget. Places like South Muf- Mufasa, butchering the name, where the unwanted of society seemed to end up. He'd learned from the misfortune of others that if he didn't come up with a name for himself, the police and the internet would come up with one for him. And they didn't always come up with the best of names. So, Azuka decided since he was also kind of shit at names, to stick with the one he'd had in his previous timeline, Viridian. He smirked as he tied up a group of drug traders, who were now glaring at him. He chuckled. The new voice modifier made him, his voice sound deeper and older. It sounded like his view switched herself, which honestly put Izuku more at ease. Do a favor for me, would ya? As he, he grinned beneath the mask and looked at the men. Let the cops know that Viridian says hi. With that, he nimbly scaled the side of the building, finding handholds and footholds where most people would find none. Within minutes, the police were on the scene, responding to the phone call of the frightened civilian he'd saved. A man with a familiar tan trench coat stepped out of the vehicles. Viridian Green. So they finally put Tsukasa on the case. This'll be interesting. He knew that of the detective from his original vigilante career. He was a good man and a fantastic detective. Viridian was going to have fun with him. All right, detective. All right, detective. Viridian muttered to himself. Let the games begin. I have no name. Dude, have you heard of that new vigilante in Mufasa? The cake is a lie. Viridian, right? He's all over the chat rooms. Nobody can stop talking about the guy. Dragon in a dress. I think he's just a rumor. Nobody has seen him, but... The people he's supposedly caught after all. Moldy Broccoli. I saw him, I swear! He totally saved me the other night. These guys were about to attack me, and then he just hops down from the roofs, like a badass, and saves me. He looks like a ninja, but he has green eyes. Noah's scared easy. You serious? The cake is a lie. I'm glad you're okay. Did you get a picture? Dragon in a dress. I still don't think he's real. Moldy Broccoli. I got a grainy shot. It was dark. Give me a sec. I'm still new to the site. Noise is scared easily. Upper left to your chat box, click the dots, should have an option for attachment. Moldy Broccoli. Thanks. Moldy Broccoli. Savior.jpg. Demonic slash gay slash microwave. 
Holy shit, he's real. Dragon in a dress. Mmm, could be photoshopped. Barbie is a whore. Just admit you're wrong. Shmurf. Moldy broccoli. At any rate, I owe Viridian my life. He's got a new fan for me. For sure. Hashtag Viridian. Hashtag heroes. Hashtag vigilante. Hashtag Viridian the hero. Hello, thank you for listening. I did get permission from the author to make this. And I'm sorry if I was butchering the words or if I was pronouncing things wrong or stumbling over words. I'm using this to help me pronounce things better and to get better at speaking. One last thing before you guys leave, I did get permission to post this on here and go visit the description for links to the author and to the fanfiction. Um, please do visit them and read that. Have a nice day.